Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Celia Antoniu. I'm a lecturer in the UK and I'm here to chair the session with Eleonora Mengueva, who is um, the mentor from Uzbekistan and her lovely tutors. And just before we begin, for those of you who might be new, um, I would just like to say a few things about how you know the, se the session uh, works and what the structure is. So we have, first of all, the four minute presentations uh, from the tutors, and then we have interaction in the breakout rooms um, where you can ask any questions and discuss this, the posters in more detail. And then we will come back to the main room for a wrap up. And um, I would also like to encourage you, if you have any questions or comments, to keep them a little bit for later. Okay. So the very first part is the poster presentations, which will be monitored uh, by our mentor, Eleonora. So I'd like to give the floor to you so that you can introduce your teacher's presentations. Hello, thank you. Hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm really happy to see you all. So my name is Eleonora Mingliva. So I'm from Uzbekistan and my um, teachers, teacher researchers are also from Uzbekistan and from, let's say, different parts of <laughs> Uzbekistan. And I'm really pleased to see you all. So yeah, let me share my screen. Here we go. Yeah. So, uh, well, quick um, introduction. So we are the Naturist Project. So that is funded by Hornby Trust. And we are um, building a new network for teacher researchers in Uzbekistan. So yeah, and this is... Uh, our first cohort of teacher researchers who are going to share their research that they have done. So we have wonderful teachers who have done wonderful projects and yeah, we're happy to share uh, our results. So let's start with the first uh, presentation. So uh, let me introduce you our mentor um, and teacher researcher. Her name is Malika Mirvahidova. She is an EAP teacher at Team University of Uzbekistan. And she's going to talk about the, how to engage students so that they complete their tasks. So yeah, Malika, over to you. Hello to everyone. Glad to see you all. My name is Malika Mirvahidova. Uh, I am teacher researcher. I teach at non-state university, a foundation course students. The groups that I teach are quite large. There are more than 20 students. And um, the challenge that I have been facing were that poor engagement of my students and they are in different attitude towards classroom activities. And my research focus uh, became some students uh, in different attitude towards classroom activities. And then I designed my exploratory research question, which was why some students are not engaged in completion of classroom activities. In addition to this, I developed some research questions based on my perception, students' perception and their behavior. Uh, my data collection uh, involved uh, my own reflections, students' uh, questionnaire, and uh, their behavior, observing their behavior. So my exploratory research findings showed that uh, most of my students really liked the tasks given from the module. Uh, they, most of them think that the group work was really interesting for them. And uh, as for their behavior, I noticed that whenever I started giving input or ask them to work individually or writing tasks I assigned, they started becoming less motivated. And the literature I read suggests to me that I should mostly uh, focus on meaningful activities and direct uh, the activities to my students' abilities and interests. Also, I should take into account that students can be of different categories based on their personality, and there can be some reasons why students may lack participation. Based on all of this, I came up with my action research plan, and there was action research question. Uh, so my question was, what effect can group work meaningful activities have on students' attitude towards task completion? And based on this, I developed three actions. Action one, group work activities. Action two, meaningful tasks. And action three, encouraging my students to use their abilities. Uh, again, I uh, made data collection in this action level, which was my own reflection. Students uh, given questionnaire to them and brief talk with them and observing their behavior. 
Uh, my action level plan uh, was uh, shown in two parts, in survey results and interview results. In survey results, I could find that most uh, students believe that activity will be important for them if, they, if the activity teaches them skills needed for life and career. Most of them were for uh, group work activities because it was interesting for them. They thought that it, will, it would teach them uh, career and life skills, and also it would uh, let them to use their abilities. As for my interview results, when I talked to my students, I found out that they started uh, considering that le the lessons became more effective. They started feeling less shy to ask questions. They started uh, to feel free to ask my help. And they saw that lessons became more helpful and more interesting for them. So this uh, exploratory action research helped me to change my reflection. So my own reflection, I started to look at group work with different approach, thinking that group work is not only useful for speaking activities, but also very necessary for writing tasks as well and change in my students' behavior. Since my students were less engaged in writing tasks, I made them more meaningful and group work based and my students' behavior also changed. They became more engaged in this. And the last change was in my students' perception. They started feeling more confident because I started highlighting on their abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, thank you so much, everyone. I would like to see you in the breakout room for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Malika. Um, Malika has done a very impressive work, especially when because she's an EAP teacher and EAP teachers actually like face different challenges. Um, and one of them is like engaging students into task completion. Yeah, and so she will be in one of the breakout rooms and uh, we are inviting you to attend that. Um, so now, um, I would like to introduce you. Um, I would like to introduce the Dora Khaliva, another um, teacher researcher. So she's an ESP teacher and she's from the University of World Economy and Diplomacy. So her topic is also very interesting and it's all about how to motivate students in the online environment. So Dildora, over to you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dildora Khaliva and I'm an ESP teacher. And I work at the university and as because of pandemic situation, whole world shifted to online education, yes, online learning. And as well, we also shifted to online. And during that period, I noticed that some uh, problems in one of my groups. I noticed that uh, they, uh, they've lost the motivation to study, that their interest uh, lost. So because of this, in order to find out its reason, I created three questions and the, the, I composed the following questions. So why are some of my students are in this group unmotivated to study online? How do I decide that my students are uh, unmotivated to study online? And what do they do when I assign online tasks to students? So as a data collection tools i use the observation i observed my own class and i delivered students uh, questionnaires open-ended questions and they delivered their answers online as well and i made some notes for myself so after getting their answers to my questions uh, my perceptions were really uh, so i was really frustrated i was nervous because I, I lost my, uh, let's say, um, confidence in my teaching English. I was just thinking about that. But after getting their answers, I found out that students' perception about online learning that they also felt, um, the, they, uh, felt that there is no eye contact. They hate online learning because they are sitting in one room without anyone, that they lost interest, yeah. And, but as well, there are positive sides, the time saving, flexible, then more time to spend their, uh, to, with their family. But all the negative sides all the way, the positive sides as well. But uh, further, I can say that uh, about students' performance, I should say that uh, there were uh, less students participated step by step. They were, uh, let's say, leaving the lessons. And some of them were afraid of making some mistakes and their focus was mainly on reading only one aspect. So uh, overall, after uh, analyzing this all, I moved to uh, action level. So an action level, I wanted to find out what should be done in order to motivate my students to study online. Yes, and uh, according to their answers, I just began to select the topics that are interested 
interesting to my students that uh, it should be a lot of fun activities engaging it should be to my students i according to my students suggestion i try to use more role plays more speaking uh, question parts debate and after this um, and uh, involving into this process, uh, I should say, what kind of changes are happening now? I can say that uh, we began to use various activities and the participation is increased of my uh, of the students. Uh, it, it is increased because the exercises, the uh, activities are really interesting for them. Uh, here you can say that all of them began to be involved in our Telegram group. We have one group and they began to uh, discuss with each other different kind of topics. They began to send their assignments uh, and the uh, discussion in the group was very high. And also I should say that um, uh, the students began to answer to my, uh, they began to send me gratitude letters, let's say that they are feeling some changes, that they are really uh, interested in the activities. They, uh, each student are, some students are began to say that they are really motivated, feeling themselves motivated and uh, various uh, activities, they are uh, suggesting themselves. And it is one of the good sides as well. And about my perceptions, it is also, I am more confident nowadays. I am also feeling myself more happy and our uh, rapport with students is also increasing. So um, I should that even the number of the students was also increasing in the lessons and the lesson is becoming more interesting, more okay. engaging, more fun. Thank okay. you for so much. Uh, see you on breakout room. Thank you so much, um, Deltora. Um, yeah, uh, your topic was also very interesting. So I think like many teachers have faced um, some issues regarding the motivation of students in the online environment and how to maintain the motivation of the students. So uh, we have a um, kind of um, a topic that is also done in the similar environment, which is the virtual. So I'm going to give the floor to Firuza Erkulova. She's an EFL teacher, PhD student from, and um, she actually works at Namangan State University. And she's also going to talk about how to make online grammar learning uh, engaging for the students. So Firuzipa, over to you. Um, Yes, unmute, please. Here's a part, Firza, go ahead. I'm so sorry. So my project is making online grammar learning engaging for students, which was born during pandemic situation where the students were in panic what to do, not from the COVID, but from uh, entering the university, which requires uh, to take grammar tests. And there were 12 students uh, in the project with my peer teacher. According to the research focus, according to the uh, questions, we did some data uh, with my peer teacher, okay, Eleonora. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did interview from the students, we did Google well, form survey, we compared the pre and post activities, and most of the time I observed my peer teacher's lesson and she did the, uh, the same action. So data collection tools were gathered uh, through questionnaires, interviews, and tests. According to the research questions uh, and findings, together with my peer, we did uh, we created three action plans. So we didn't create; it was uh, made, but we saw that it is the right way to teach in the pandemic situation. So we worked. Uh, uh, we made quizzes and tests on Kahoot together with the students. And uh, we did online practice on Padlet. They were ready-made lessons, and we ourselves made our lessons by them by ourselves. And the sensational sentences jumper, which is very interesting. Uh, the students made their sentences by their own. And here, here you can just uh, analyze what they have, uh, what lacks they have, and what they don't. And uh, according to the findings, uh, we did. Uh, uh, as I have mentioned, pre-post test results in ordinary work documented and on Kahoot. So there is a huge difference. Uh, so if it is uh, with the ball, I have given in the percentages uh, uh, about the Kahoot. And uh, the next one was on uh, uh, the next one. 
uh, survey based on online gram explanation on Padlet. And the next one on the sensational jumper sentences. Uh, so at the end, we came to conclusion that our students' awareness of grammar rise to 17 uh, percent, and they became more interesting, interested in uh, learning grammar. So learning grammar is not only just teaching grammar ordinary traditionally, but through the interactive method uh, on online lessons, we teach them uh, or more engaging. So they have improved their uh, quality of the lesson, and we developed our, our OT skills and small group activities. We understood that are important. And uh, so, uh, yes, pandemic situation helped us a lot. We learned a lot, and the teachers and the students also got learn a lot. So if you have any questions, so in breakout rooms, you may ask any of them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Firza, um, for a lovely presentation. So um, we have also another speaker from the same university, Namangan State University. So her name is Delan Prusaram Sokova. So she is going to talk about what kind of project she has done in order to develop students' autonomy. So Dela first, over to you. Is she here? Okay. Thank you, Eleanor. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is the teacher at Namangan State University. I'm. Um, can you hear? Yeah. Yes. Hello. We can. Yes. 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 We can hear you very well. Eleonora? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Well, I'm a teacher at Namangia State University. I teach EAP for undergraduates who are few here. I have identified some challenges in my teaching as well, as majority of my students are not, were not active and use it to keep mother tongue and autonomy. Therefore, I wanted to motivate my students to explore the main findings on learner autonomy through reflecting on my own perceptions, having a talk with my colleagues, taking questionnaire and follow-up interviews with my students. Based on the data I have collected at my exploratory, where I have designed autonomy building activities, implemented on-site and off-site tasks, and even conducted uh, a public speaking contest. I have collected data through my reflections on the activities I have implemented, rubrics, self-assess each tasks. And uh, I had discussions with my students on the activities they have done and the observation of my colleague uh, on the behavior of my students, how well they are performing during the class contest. The students assessed uh, their performance in the contest and they felt that their participation helped them to develop their autonomy. Well, autonomy building activities uh, are very important and crucial for students due to various beneficial effects such as merges, uh, collaboration, social interaction, between uh, better concentration on students, field progress, assessing by rubrics by themselves. As outcome, my students became more active, autonomous in individual, pair, and group work tasks, and the uh, Currently, they are keeping the target language while doing tasks with uh, interests. Well, dear colleagues, you are welcome to join in breakout room to discuss our attention. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, the first, um, sorry that there were some 
breaks in between, but if you have like questions, because she has designed wonderful uh, activities and then rubrics in order to, you know, like encourage students to develop their autonomy. So you could ask her in the breakout rooms and she could explain more. So thank you. So now yes. um, you are welcome to discuss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. So now we are moving to the next uh, speaker. So, and um, she's another teacher researcher from the Natros project. So she's also an EAP teacher. She teaches at British Management University and she has done a wonderful um, research on identifying the strategies um, to, you know, to make students, let's say, be willing to speak in the pay work. Okay, so Ella, over to you. Yes, uh, greetings, dear colleagues. My name is Ella Maksakova. I'm an EP teacher at a privately um, owned university in Tashkent. Um, my research started when I couldn't find the answer to the question why my students are so reluctant to speak in pairs. The activity which I viewed as a student friendly, less demanding than academic writing, for example, plus they were always free to choose a partner to speak to. And the data that I found from an exploratory phase reminded me of an iceberg where some behavioral patterns were really easy to spot, while potential reasons that caused that performance had to be elicited with a questionnaire. And um, so my action plan started with um, speaking dictagloss. This activity uh, tried to address the effective domain of the issue. I wanted uh, to give a chance uh, to my students to develop a habit of speaking English to each other, providing them a secure place, free of risk to make mistakes environment. And so the students were supposed to ask and answer questions in turns using the information uh, on the cards. And I need to say here that both questions and answers, they were one step lower than students' current level of English. Uh, the idea was to induce them into speaking uh, English and help them appreciate their input. Even if the mistakes are made, they did not distort the meaning very much. Uh, the next action that they introduced was guided role play. Uh, and this activity tried to address the issue of uh, complexity of academic topics, lack of uh, preparation time when speaking in pairs. So this activity uh, reserved more creativity for students' answers while still they were guided enough in terms of what to say. The topic was pretty much familiar by now, but um, they were not limited as to how to say it. Well, and uh, what I found, uh, the analysis of the action plan um, proved that speaking dictagloss was pretty much helpful um, to build uh, this feeling of security among students when they speak English uh, to each other. Um, the, the figure stated like 77% of students in the first round of the activity and 83% of students in the second round of the activity, they reported they spoke more English than their first language. Uh, and besides, um, a significant number of students uh, reported that they found their partner quite supportive. Um, and the guided role play, yeah, despite that it's considered less uh, controlled activity, um, I think the majority of the students reported that the activity equipped them content wise, so they can concentrate more on the language. I think the success uh, of this role play can be attributed because the topic was familiar. We have studied it thoroughly and they had to um, use L1 occasionally, but for clarification purposes and knowing vocabulary. So now reflecting back on uh, the research that should continue, I, I can say now that um, my foundation here students when speaking in English and pairs might be challenged on different levels. And sometimes the linguistical level, the most easier to support while their own perception of themselves speaking to their partner, the perception of their partner and the perception of the activity itself, that activity reveals their vulnerability uh, these are hidden and that caused the greater inhibition to speaking. Well, here I stop. And if you would like to know more about uh, the activities, how they were created, welcome to the breakout room. Thank you, Ella. 
Thank you so much. Um, that is really interesting topic to yeah to learn more, especially if you are an EAP teacher and if you are teaching, let's say, business English could be very good to explore. And so yeah, welcome to the breakout rooms to see and discuss what kind of activities you can use. Thank you. And um, another speaker who is going to be presenting, uh, her name is Nilufar Tulaiva. Uh, so she's an adjunct professor from Webster University in Tashkent, and she's going to talk about how to develop students' critical thinking in writing. Hello, everyone. Hello, dear colleagues. Um, so uh, my research topic is here, how to develop critical thinking in students' writing. So um, I'm a university student, but I have more than 50 year experience with working high school students. So uh, when I started to work at university, I found out what, that a lot of my students are uh, struggling with writing and the quality of their writing items are not as good as we expected. Then I tried to reflect uh, to the experience uh, which I gained at, uh, while I was working at schools because I saw that there are some problems with like an, uh, at that level as well. So um, when I reflected to this experience, I found out with several uh, problems and the, the, as you see on the screen. So, and these problems really affected too much negatively the quality of the students' uh, work. So uh, based on the literature which I read and also the experience which I gained uh, during this process uh, really helped me uh, to explore this topic. Then I developed, uh, developed research uh, exploratory questions so in order to find the right answer, in order to uh, like and find where the critical thinking is, it's like a lack of critical thinking is a serious problem um, in terms of developing writing skills. So I use several data collection tools. So I use a student's essay sample. It's like in pre and post, before exploratory phase and after action phase. So then I interviewed my uh, colleagues and also I used some questionnaires for students again in pre and post questionnaire. So then of course, the most important one for me was like to address uh, my reflective journal several times uh, during this research. So uh, then, uh, so as you see, I used several tools, data collection tools, in order to uh, find the answer to my questions. Uh, to find the answer or to understand my own perception about the topic, I use a teacher reflective journal in order to understand uh, the other's perception, including my students and my colleagues. I use it uh, interview questions, and for my students, I use it a questionnaire to conduct the survey. Uh, in order to, of course, my students' behavior and performance is very important. Uh, so that's why I use it uh, two data collection tools again teacher reflective journal then uh, my students essay samples. Um, Eleanor, okay, so uh, after getting some results from exploratory phase, then uh, of course the uh, literature um, which I read in order to explore this uh, like an, uh, problem. Uh, so I came to the conclusion that uh, uh, I, I, I wanted to try three activities in order to uh, find a solution to this problem. They are Socratic seminar, debate and presentation. And I tried to keep the consistency between them. First of all, for, for example, for the first session, students are involved in Socratic seminars where they are invited to read different types of the articles, discuss, and they are going to uh, like a debate for the second session, then uh, get, uh, like and using the knowledge which they gain at through Socratic seminar debates, they are going to make the presentation. So after these activities, I asked my students to uh, like an, uh, answer the questionnaire again. And uh, yeah, I, I got a lot of uh, like, an, I got significant positive feedback about Socratic seminar debates and presentation. And the most important one for me was the result. Like in, when I compared the pre and like in past essays, students' essays. So uh, yep, Eleonora, the last one, please. Okay, so this one was very important for me. So I was very happy to compare uh, my students' initial essays with uh, like in the last essay, uh, essays after like an um, action uh, plan. So I saw significant increase in their quality. quality. So um, yeah, uh, 
I, I think that's not enough, but uh, I have to try one more time in order uh, to be very sure. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, you're very welcome for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Nilfar, uh, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions regarding how to integrate critical thinking into students' writing, you're welcome to go to the room with Nilfar and discuss. Excellent. Thank you. Let me just thank all of you, first of all, Malika, Dildora, Perusa, Dilafruz, Ella, Nilfar, you've done amazing work. Uh, very well, um, you know, created posters and the topics that you have chosen to talk about are very up to date and very uh, timely, as we say. Uh, now, uh, I have created the breakout rooms. Excellent. Welcome back, everyone. I brought you back right on time, I think, exactly at three o'clock UK time. I hope you had uh, enough of time to interact with each other and uh, discuss the different posters and ask any questions. Uh, what I will be doing now for the next 15 minutes is just invite uh, presenters one by one to say a little bit um, you know, about the feedback or the comments that they got and what they learned uh, from the interaction with, uh, with the audience. So perhaps if we start with the first poster uh, presenter, would that be okay if we start with Malika? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you yeah. so much, everyone. Um, so our discussion in the breakout room was very engaging. Um, I, I was able to talk to several people. Uh, so I could see there are some familiar people like Hurshida. Uh, she was there to support me <laughs> from our home country. Yeah, And uh, I was very glad to find out that my uh, completed research was uh, kind of able to inspire her to do more, uh, to continue her research. And now uh, she's also, uh, also um, talking about um, to work exactly, I would say, in this uh, way, in this approach, or following my approach, following the way I did it. And she was asking for some uh, information, and I was very happy to share uh, what I know all about this. And then uh, there were some more people like Nicole. She was interested in <clears throat> how I decided to take exactly these actions. And I explained uh, everything that I combined that my own reflections first, my questionnaire results taken from students and my mentor Eleonora's uh, uh, regular comments because as, as soon as I was done with my reflections, I was uh, sending it to her and she was uh, sending it back to me with comments and she was guiding me through all this uh, period. And so I said that I combined all of this and came up with these actions. And in addition, the literature that I have read based on these topics uh, mm -hmm. made me uh, to come to these decisions. And also there were two more gentlemen, Mr. Santosh. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very um, uh, supportive with his warm, sincere congratulations and words. And uh, he asked uh, questions about uh, my context um, and about my students and the questionnaire results, the way I administered it. And uh, he also was interested how, uh, or maybe whether this uh, ER, exploratory mm -hmm. action research, can be the tool for personal or professional development for teachers. And I tried to explain it within my example that I, this year, exactly after this project, through this project, I rediscovered myself as a kind of a teacher from another perspective. So I was giving examples for this. And there was one more gentleman, Mr. Musa. Uh, he was also interested in how I made my writing tasks more meaningful. And I briefly explained that I made it again based on my students' needs through the questionnaire and the literature that I have read. And I made it in two stages. The first stage was a group discussion based and the second stage writing. And uh, I was glad that I was able to share my views, my reflections, um, and uh, yeah, the people were, um, they were all of them supportive, and mm -hmm. uh, thanks for this. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Excellent. Thank you, Malika. Thank you. Um, let's take it now to Dildora. Dildora, your presentation was on uh, students' low level of motivation eh? wow. while engaging remotely, which is very um, 
uh, timely. So just, you know, in uh, in two minutes, any feedback, any comments that you got in the breakout yes. room? Yes, in our breakout room, uh, I talked to Mr. Musabas and Ms. Nicole, Ms. Nicole, and we talked about them. Musabas, he asked me about the activities I used in my classroom, about their level, yes. We just changed his opinions and he was really supportive. I should mention about this one as well. He's a really enthusiastic person. And even Ms. Nicole, uh, we have the similar, yes. We have similar, uh, let's say, situation with her. We just exchanged opinions with her. And I really, uh, let's say, um, felt myself so uh, cal uh, in a warm atmosphere. I felt myself, even because uh, I should say that uh, here, all people are really so uh, oh, you're motivated. breaking out a little bit, did Laura? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should say uh, that uh, they are they were really supportive and uh, uh, one more thing uh, using this opportunity i want to express my gratitude to our mentor eleanor Mingliva for her great uh, contributions to the development of uh, our country education in our country and to the development of uh, the teachers in uzbekistan she is doing great job thank you eleanora from whole our team we express our gratitude to you. And uh, without you, we, we wouldn't be able to do such research, but that was you who showed us, who facilitated us, who directed us, and who always supported us, and who was, uh, she is always uh, available for us, be it midnight, be it early in the morning, but she was always supportive and always available for us. Thank you so much. And thank you for the organiz uh, uh, organizers, uh, for you as well because you are giving us such a great opportunity and we are exchanging opinions with other uh, researchers here. We can learn from each other a lot and uh, we are just on the same uh, way going on the same journey, just various topics, various research, but the same journey. And the, each of the teachers, each of the support, uh, researchers are supporting each other. Thank you so much and express uh, let's just accept our gratitude thank you so much and i'm back <laughs> oh my god oh my god this is internet connection issues i'm so sorry about this so have we finished with dildora yeah <laughs> Okay, uh, let's move on to Feruza. Feruza, my dear, uh, you had the next poster. You were focusing on online grammar eh? and how we can engage uh, adult learners. Okay, to my breakout rooms, we invite uh, to Mariana, Mukadam, uh, Nita, Irina and Janatul. It was very interactive session. I like the suggestions. There were some suggestions. Uh, from Mariana to expand my research work in the future, not in only in my class, in my classroom, but uh, whole, uh, the whole country, yes, uh, mm -hmm. to implement the online teaching uh, in the future as well. And uh, she asked me about my experience. Uh, they asked me about uh, the challenges I have faced during uh, my project. Uh, I It was very interactive breakout room. Uh, so lots of questions, but First of all, I want to say my gratefulness for the organizers of ISFL conference and to my Eleonora, uh, who showed the way, who showed the right way, what to do. Sometimes she was strict when we didn't have enough time to fulfill something. And, uh, but uh, she was a very, uh, a good facilitator, brilliant, not very brilliant facilitator, leader, a perfect mentor. And in our group, we had great a grand mentor, mentor and mentee in our breakout room. And my special gratitude to Mariana as well. So very wonderful questions and suggestions to implement in the future. She asked me, she uh, told me, she gave me suggestions. Thank you so much, dears. That's, that's the important thing. All the suggestions that you get and the feedback that helps you develop your project and decide how to, you know, which aspects of this project you would like to improve or continue working on. That's absolutely great. Excellent. And Dilla Fruz, my dear, 
you were working with motivating students to help them become uh, more autonomous? You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before starting, yeah, my impressions in the breakout rooms, yeah, I would like to highlight, yeah. Uh, um, I would like to highlight uh, my gratitude uh, to my mentor, Eleonora, for her great commitment uh, in our project, yes, who guided us, instructed us, yeah, uh, showed us how to do, what to do, yeah. Tell the truth, I explored myself uh, as a teacher researcher. I felt uh, have to do research yeah, in the classroom and also have to address the needs of my students, yeah, their interests uh, as well. Yeah, in the breakout rooms, um, I had a few visitors, um, um, yeah, Miss Yana, yeah, she uh, was very interested in my research findings. I, uh, I'm really happy to share uh, the findings and uh, data collection tools as well in the action research level, uh, what kind of uh, activities, autonomy building activities mm -hmm. I um, have implemented and the outcome of uh, those activities. Yeah, uh, thank you for nice, question, uh, nice questions. Uh, yeah, Miss Yana. Uh, anyway, thank you uh, all of you for organizing and uh, giving us a great opportunity to present here and uh, yeah, meet uh, nice people, uh, teacher researchers across the world. Thank you so much. Excellent. Uh, I will leave the floor now to Ella, uh, who's um, talking about strategies for pairing AAP Foundation year students. Any yes. feedback? Yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I know that you expect me to reflect on uh, the questions and feedback I got, but before, in a minute, I will do. I, I would like to reflect on that wonderful sense of community that okay. we all uh, received well during this two days event. It's amazing that um, I uh, we are all all our talents, experience, recognized, valued. It's it's a wonderful feeling, and I would say that. Being here the second day, I could I come to a conclusion that a teacher, it's a profession who where this research component is in within. Because I was asked by how much demanding was it to find or to create, adapt the activity for your action plan, mm -hmm. and I caught myself on the thought that actually that was research when you feel dissatisfaction, when you're rejecting to set for less when you're, you're freezing to lower your standards, that you already start researching. You just need to acknowledge that you are doing something when you're starting looking for a nice activity for your students. So uh, I was a question how demanding it was uh, to prepare an activity for an action plan. And yes, thank you for the question about um, how I used this pairing strategy, how I set my students into pairs so it got me another perspective okay it could be done based on this and on that uh, there was also an activity about um this particular action speaking dr gloss i know that it's kind of not quite clear so i'm thank you for the opportunity to explain it more and if you find it helpful i'm very happy um thank you for the mentor i don't know what more to say El eleonora definitely I'm very happy and lucky to be today here. I, I think that they, they, we all want a continuation. Thank you for organizers oh. and participants. <laughs> it is so touching to hear all these positive comments and how you feel that this is just a community and how you have uh, developed and grown. That's great. Um, and uh, last but not least, as we say, uh, a little bit about critical thinking, my dear. Anything you want to say from the breakout rooms, Nilfer? Anything? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here and share my experience and get some feedback. Uh, I talked to some uh, teachers and I found out that uh, some teachers have the same problem with me. And it gave me uh, like an idea that, yes, this topic should be explored and this topic, this problem should be solved. <laughs> So thank you so much for those teachers who uh, just tried to comment and ask it questions. Uh, so I felt very supportive. So uh, I would like uh, to say my, uh, like in a huge amount of thanks to Eleonora. So uh, usually my colleagues have already told how Eleonora is a good 
perfect mentor, but you know, I would like to say, I know that Eleonora from Uzbekistan, but I really don't know in which time zone Eleonora is living uh, because <laughs> she is 24 and seven available. So whenever we are asking questions, she's responding. So she supported us a lot. For example, uh, yeah, I should admit that I wanted to give up several times that she uh, like encouraged us and thank you so much Eleonora for this uh, so I got to benefit from this research uh, the, from this pre project uh, and uh, I came to the conclusion teachers are usually burn out it's because of intuition based sessions intuitive intuition based classes so if you conduct research based classes so you will get the benefit and your learners also will get the benefit. So that's why, yeah, it, it's, so I changed my style of teaching and I think that, yeah, I get a lot and I'm going to uh, explore not only my teaching process, I would like to explore myself as a teacher, as a professional as well. Thank you so much, everyone. It was very nice chance, thank you. Excellent, Nilufer. thank you. Thank you so much. It's exactly as you said, when we have, when we have these difficulties that we face as researchers, it's the, you know, the ability to concentrate and keep going that helps us uh, do you. the research. Uh, I'm conscious of the time now, so I will just share the link for certificates in the chat box uh, for those of you who would like to download it and, and have it. And I will let you know that the next session that we have now will be starting at 3.25 UK time. Now it's 15.17 already, we missed two minutes, uh, but we will be starting with a group from Argentina with mentors uh, Ruben and Mariana, and uh, later on with Sedan. Uh, from uh, Sudan, sorry, from Turkey. Um, so hope to see you there to continue our discussion. Okay, let's get the break that we all need and let's resume. It was lovely seeing you all. Amazing work. Well done, everyone. Well done.